In this video, we will look at the various parts which make up the hydraulic system, which provides pressure on the grinding rollers of a vertical mill. The specific mill we look at is an Atox mill, which is specifically designed for the cement industry. This mill is an example of a modern vertical grinding mill. The detailed description of the maintenance procedures for this mill are, to some extent, related to the Atox mills manufacturer's own design of hydraulic systems. In other words, the numbers given to valves and manometers in this video are specific to this Atox mill. In order to make the demonstration of maintenance activities as clear as possible, we have chosen to look at the components of a brand new hydraulic system. This is before it is installed as part of a vertical mill in operation. Detailed diagrams and instructions should be available on site for all personnel who work with operation and servicing. This is an example of a comprehensive diagram which includes very valuable data of use in maintenance activities. This manufacturer's diagram has been provided to the company in connection with the purchase of the grinding mill. Photocopies of the diagram with important details should be available for both operating and maintenance staff. Examples of documentation are an operating manual, a service manual, both provided by the manufacturer, and a logbook which records and documents maintenance procedures that have been carried out. In this logbook, the following data should be registered. Pressure settings, oil temperatures, change of filters, and the dates for all measurements and maintenance operations. In addition, there should be a section which allows for the write-up of special events like change of oil, blockage in the water cooling system, etc. The addition of new hydraulic oil takes place through the oil filter and cooling pump. Valve 20 has to be closed. Then the cap fitted to connect to branch 26 has to be removed and a hose is mounted. The other end of the hose is put into a drum of hydraulic fluid, approximately 200 litres, and the electric motor 25 is started. The fluid is pumped up through filter 33 and down into the tank. When the drum is nearly empty, the electric motor is switched off. The motor is restarted and care must be taken that excess air is not sucked into the system. The process is repeated using a new drum of oil. Six drums should be enough to fill the system. The level in the tank must be checked continually. Filling up to level one is carried out in connection with the very first equipment start, or when oil has been drained from the system. This is necessary because the cylinders have to be filled up with hydraulic oil. When level two is reached, the hose is removed. The cap is remounted and the valve 20 is reopened. Emptying hydraulic fluid from the system is also carried out using the filter pump. In this case, the cap on connector branch 30 is removed and the hose is mounted here. The use of electric motor 25 will now empty fluid out into an empty drum. The high pressure oil pumps had to be replaced or overhauled if they are unable to maintain the necessary pressure. A first indication that the oil pressure is not high enough is an increase in the drain oil volume as measured in flow meter 14. The delivered pressure from the pump is read from manometer 41. This pressure can be adjusted by turning the pressure compensator which is at the side of the pump. The pump should be capable of delivering 200 bar but this pressure cannot be adjusted to be higher than the setting which has been selected on safety valve 58. 
The safety valve is adjusted in connection with the manometer. If a pump is to be removed, it is important to close suction valve 4. When a pump is reinstalled, it is necessary to prime the internal body of the pump with hydraulic oil. When an electric motor or a filter has been installed, system valve 4 must be reopened. When restarting the motor, it is important to check the actual direction of rotation immediately. The correct direction of rotation is shown on the body of the pump. If the direction is found to be wrong, then the electrical connections must be reversed by an electrician. Like all hydraulic systems, the removal of air from the system is of vital importance. A useful way of removing air is to employ a hose usually used for measuring pressure. The hose can be fitted to any of the measuring points with the other end of the hose stuck down in a bucket. A very low oil pressure is selected. The absence of air escape noises and a very stable pressure reading on the manometer shows that air has been expelled from the system. Special air removal nipples can be found on the side of the accumulators. If a part of the system near the cylinder has been removed, it is necessary to move the cylinders to their extreme position to expel the air. This can only be done by removing the pressure rods from the cylinders. It is important to check that the pre-charge pressure has the correct relationship to the grinding pressure. The relationship between these two pressures at different levels are given as a graph in the operating instructions available with a specific mill. For every grinding pressure there is an optimum pre-charge pressure which gives the vertical mill the best possible grinding effect without damaging the gas membrane. The pre-charge pressure or gas pressure in the accumulators can be read on gas manometer 105. The gas pressure can only be adjusted when the hydraulic system is in a no load status. This no load situation is achieved by opening valve 65. This diagram of an accumulator shows the rubber internal bladder which is normally only a few centimeters above the bottom valve. Valve 61 ensures a minimum oil pressure. This keeps the gas bladder away from the valve at the bottom of the vessel. If the bladder repeatedly hammers against this bottom valve, it will be damaged. This will remove the dampening effect. Adjustment of valve 61 must be done with the grinding rollers at rest. The pressure at valve 61 is shown by manometer 42. Clockwise rotation increases pressure and the opposite reduces pressure. Gas filling is carried out using an ordinary nitrogen gas cylinder. Only nitrogen must be used. Each cylinder has scraping rings which remove dust and dirt from the piston. This reduces the quantity of dust which enters the hydraulic system. In addition, there are seals within the cylinders which are also subject to wear. These seals are placed just behind the scraping rings. 
The wear which has occurred at these rings can be controlled by the manometer hose 102. The hose can be released from the bottom of the cylinder. The quantity of oil which leaks past the seal will indicate the state of these seals. The greater the volume expelled, the more warm the seals are. If this volume is significantly greater than was the case when the seals were new, these seals should be renewed. Once a year the piston seal should be replaced and the cylinder internal diameter should be measured at the place within the cylinder where there is most direct contact between the cylinder wall and the sides of the pressure piston. The diameter at this point of maximum wear should not be greater than 0.1 millimeter compared with the diameter of the cylinder where the piston rarely works. A difference greater than this means that the cylinder tube must be changed. Cleanliness is of the utmost importance for the continuous well functioning of hydraulic systems. If any part of the system is dismantled, even for a short period, the item must be cleaned internally as well as externally. Two items are particularly important in general maintenance, the oil temperature and oil purity. The oil's working temperature must be between 50 and 55 degrees centigrade. The temperature is regulated by the water oil cooler. The volume of water passing through the cooler is controlled by thermostat valve 35. The filter for the water flow is number 34 and should be checked regularly. Very frequent controls of the filter must be made if the cooling water is of an open type with water entry from natural water reservoirs. The oil cleanliness is maintained by filter 33. A pressure drop alarm, which is registered in the control room, indicates that the unit must be changed. The filter housing can be screwed off. The filter unit must be removed, discarded and replaced by a completely new unit. Impurities can enter the system through the tank filter if this is not functioning properly. Another source of impure hydraulic oil is contamination around the piston rings. This happens when the scraping rings are worn. Both the tank filter and the scraping rings must be changed every year. Condensed water which collects at the bottom of the tank will soon destroy the properties of hydraulic oil. Water can be removed through valve two. The same valve can be used to take samples of the operating oil. The first two liters which are tapped from the bottom are unsuitable for testing. The next oil must be collected in a suitable container. An oil sample must also be taken from valve 92. This should be sent to any reputable laboratory or other agency which, amongst other things, must carry out a particle count using ISO 4406. These oil analyses must be undertaken to ensure that the quality of the hydraulic oil has not deteriorated. If not, the oil must be changed once a year. The hydraulic system is quite simple in design and can operate for many years without major problems. Trouble-free operation can only be achieved by the further maintenance and general surveillance procedures which have been shown here. Maintenance procedures do take time to plan and carry out. However, the cost to the company of lost production and expense of changing major components in the hydraulic system are so great by comparison that maintenance cannot be neglected. Finally, it must be remembered that even if no total breakdown takes place, hydraulic systems which are unable to keep the required pressure on the grinding wheels will lead to both reduced production and more expensive production.